on one. High fly ball. Deep right field. Backing up Eaton, and that one is out of here. No sack. He crushed it. And the Red Sox have taken the lead. Bitch, put some respect on my name. When you speak on me, you speak on the game. All right, guys, welcome back to Smack Talk. Today we have... Um, a pretty cool guest, okay? He's been at multiple places, and uh, he's not only a photographer, a uh, world traveler, storyteller, but also the founder of Travel Box, which is a travel blog that works as a search engine to assist you in planning your next vacation. Ladies and gentlemen, Julien Laporte. Hey. Hey, <laughs> hey. Welcome, man. Uh, thank you for coming on. Uh, you hit me up on Instagram, and uh, I look at your content. It's beautiful, man. Um, how'd you get started? Yeah, well, I started by doing photography. Mm -hmm. So I was uh, I was kind of a, a bad place, uh, more of a depression place in yeah, my life. Yeah. And I was just playing video games all the time at home and not really going outside, not doing anything. So one day I got really angry and I just sold all my video games and I went and purchased a used camera, like mm -hmm. on Kijiji. Yeah, yeah. And the hustle there, life. Yeah. Yeah, and then from there I started uh, taking photos like around and uh, starting getting uh, really good photos. And then once uh, I got better at it, I started posting them on my Instagram. People would give me good feedback. So then from there on, we started doing uh, road trips and doing more and more f photography. And that's where I started photography there. That's so cool, man. Yeah. And Travel Box, like what, why, why did you come up with Travel Box? Like what, what sparked that idea? Yeah, so I wanted to do, at one point, I wanted to do more than just photography. I wanted to build a community of people together. Yeah, that's so important. Man. And, yeah, like, it was also during the beginning of uh, the COVID times. So, mm -hmm. like, everyone was apart, and I was trying to get more of a community going. And people were still, uh, there's still photography groups going outside, uh, going together to, to yeah. events and stuff. So I would meet a lot of people like that. So I made some contacts and uh, yeah, a bunch of us got together at one point and uh, I pitched the idea that I was, I, I, was uh, I went to school in web design. So I built, I could build a website and then maybe build a community of people that would post blogs and then photography on that website. Mm -hmm. So even though you use uh, photography like as, as an art, do you consider yourself an artist? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. No. Here and there, I would consider myself someone who's more of it on the artistic side but also more of on the analytical side yeah 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 so do you think your background in web design it was it, it really helped you out <laughs> yeah yeah I went in uh, graphic design so okay. yeah that helps me out because uh it helps me understand like how to build websites and stuff like that i i studied in both uh, wordpress and dreamweaver okay yeah yeah i'm familiar and why um you know you're not a natural writer like we talked about this before yeah. why like why did you keep on going like do you see the bigger picture behind it and you're like forcing yourself to do it or do you did you like develop a kind of a love for it yeah so i've always seen myself as more of an aggregator okay and an aggregator is is someone who uh collects information and uh builds a platform to share that information with other people okay. so i never really saw myself as a photographer or a writer Ag aggregator is more who I am, but photography and, and, and writing is more skills that I acquired to get to that point. Okay. Yeah. What is an aggregator? Like, you know, like, what it, like, what, like, how do you use that in your everyday life? Like, well, so you build websites, like, let's say, uh, there's a, a company or something that builds a website and they, uh, create a database okay. of information mm -hmm. uh, that people need to see. So in my case, it's travel locations, uh, tra uh, travel activities. Okay. So my website is built on activities that were uh, made like experienced by explorers, and then they've collected that information and put that on the website. And can you uh, can you explain like Travel Box? Like I like how how hard is it or how easy is it maybe to uh, start a website in like a well, a blog that like people actually interact with? You know? Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a tough one, right? Because you have to have people like interesting characters on there like you can't like people needs to be attracted to the person not the blog i see that a lot, a lot of <laughs> people like they're influencers they already have a lot of people backing them prior to coming because they've built a character and a persona that people like so they build that and then they come on the site and you know people will listen to what they have to say or what they the stories that they tell because they like the person <laughs> yeah and um, like, 
can you explain what travel blog is like what what like are, are there different activities like can you rent from the site like how does it work like activities yeah uh, yeah, it's still in the beginning stages, but I have a lot of plans for the future. Like okay. I have a lot of short term, long term, like right now it's more of a like experiment. Like I'm, I'm trying it out and see like if it catches, but essentially, um, it's it, activities are, you know, experienced by the travelers and explorers. And then if they like it, they can post it on the, the site. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I, I enjoy like any any activity that someone says to me, like an explorer goes out and says, "Hey, I really like this. Uh, can I, can you take a look at this?" And uh, I'll post it if I I think it's a good idea. Like I have uh, four explorers right now. Okay. Uh, shout out to uh, Mark and Natalia and yeah, Jen shout them and out, man. Alex. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're my they're helping me out and okay. and also myself. Uh, we go out and we explore uh, destination. We travel uh, to different locations in the world and. We collect, uh, we experience the... You collect the, information. You yeah, we game. collect information. Yeah, yeah. We do the activities. So we'll go on, like, let's say, I don't know, we'll go on a hike. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'll go on a hike, and if I like it, I'll, I'll take photos, and I'll document the experience, and I'll put a rating, and I'll, I'll put it on the site. Okay. But one thing that now we're, we're adding new features to the site, so we're adding, we're going to add more, like, filters, and people like it when it's like dumbed down, when it's like very easy like to, to, to do things. And like it, it's right in front of them, right? You, you just have to go there. That is rated. You know, it's a nice place. Like, you know, it's a cool activity. You know, so it's, I don't know. People tend to gravitate towards things that are uh, simple and easy to use, user friendly. Um, but travel for you, what made you fall in love with travel? Yeah. Uh, traveling is a good way to like build life experience and build tools that you're going to use in your regular life. Yeah, like, a lot of people see that like travelers are these like hippies. nomads, <laughs> like hippies yeah, yeah. that just go out and like, they're like, uh, they, they, they have no life goals and they're just bums. But really what travelers are doing is they're building, uh, the characteristics that they need in life, like to, pr uh, to go forward in life. They'll grab tools, uh, that they are really going to help in the long run, like independence and uh, that sense of exploring and going beyond, you know, your, your comfort zone. All those, those traits will really help you out in life. Yeah. Especially in like building a business, you know, yeah. you can really correlate like the, the, the fact that being a traveler and willing to take those risks, mm -hmm. that can help you out in business like every day, man. This is, it's literally what you're doing every single day, especially when you're growing something from the, the root. That's, that's really cool, man. It's really fucking cool. I like what you're doing, man. It's really cool because um, I'm a, I used to, well, I haven't traveled since, no, I, never, well, I traveled last year. But anyway, before I was a avid traveler and uh, it, the pandemic, man, just like, you know, it turned me. I was just like, fuck, man, I need to, I need to get out, you know? And now I'm very busy with everything going on. So it's just, it's hard to, to, to plan it. But fuck, man, I would love to, to what, what's your favorite destination? Because like, yeah, I understand what you're saying. That's that's really uh, that's really it, everyone needs to to get out get out and see. My my favorite destination you need is change. Uh, you know what? You need change sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little reboot. Yeah, it, it and that's what it's promoting. At first, that's that was my first initial thought. Like my mission statement was inspire people to become more travel, like inspire travelers to go out and explore. Nice. That was my first line. Like my first YouTube video was. The line was inspired travelers. That's it. But yeah, my favorite destination is uh, Banff, uh, the Rockies, yeah. Canadian. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you think I it's know, Canadian bias? <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's not that. It's that it's the first place I've really traveled to okay. with my camera. It was the first time that I went out and what took a place. photos. What yeah. a place to start. Yeah. Wow. But like first travel, like outside the city, mm. like first time I took an airplane and went somewhere wow. with the camera. And as I had a friend that lived there, so he was able to tell me like where to go, but it was, you know, you don't need to know where to go when you're in the Rockies. Like you turn around anywhere you go is, is, is a nice shot. Like, do you think you needed like those expensive cameras and stuff like that to be a successful photographer? No, hell no, no. And I, and I got asked that the other day too. Someone was asking me like, Hey, I want to start, uh, you know, being a photographer, I was take, taking photos as a hobby, just for fun, for a beginner who's never done it. And I said, to be honest, like me, the, I just 
went online. I got a Nikon. Uh, the first one was a Nikon DSLR camera, a D3100. And it was like 250 or $300. It was used. And I could tell by the when I got it from the person, there was dents and chips and Jesus. there was sand and stuff. And I was like, yeah, that, that's been used. Like it's, and it, it wasn't that great, but it, it, got me, it got me started. And that's all you need. You need like a practice camera. So everyone should start with a cheap camera. And then if they like it, you know, you go through that trial period where you're trying a new hobby. Most people give up a, a new hobby anyway. So after a certain amount, That's very true. Yeah, after a certain amount, you just say, uh, you you go through I don't know six months or whatever, and then you say, okay, I'm I like this. I'm gonna buy a real, you know, Canon or Nikon or Sony camera. Hmm. Yeah. Is there like um? How do you monetize it in the beginning? Like for someone who who would start off in the in the photography realm, like how do you monetize it? Yeah, you could you could. There's different routes you can go when you're a photographer, or or just you know going. Even in the business world, like at first you can just be like a regular photographer, like, you know, get the little contracts here and there. Like, mm -hmm. hey, there's a person that, uh, you know, wants a, a photo. There's a wedding here. There's a there's a whatsoever. Uh, but at a certain point, you get to the point where you want to you want to use the creativity side. And that's where I went. Um, for me, I was going to businesses. Um, and I was saying, hey, I'm a photographer. I'll come and take photos of your, uh, like, the either the company or the activity. Like, let's say it's a cave. I'm going to a cave. I'll call the the, uh, the association, and I'll be like, I'll come over. And then they'll usually, like, obviously waive the fee, and then they'll give me maybe some money to, to take photos. And because I have had a little bit of a following, Okay. Even, at, that even at the beginning, yeah. they were like a, an exchange for, you know, marketing. Hmm. I would I would go and yeah. So so I, so it's like we help each other out and it builds it builds both our businesses. So you you were just an entrepreneur who found a very good niche and you fell in love with that niche and thrived in it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. And how's the uh, photography like um how's the community? The uh, yeah, the community is great. Uh <laughs> the the craziest thing no because there's so many stories that pop to my head because we i've done so many cool things with photography groups yeah. and events and that's where i met roland who's who was a guest on, yeah. your, on your podcast awesome guy man yeah we did east I don't coaster know he, baby huh? <laughs> east coaster yeah yeah great guy uh yeah I, we start i met him at one of the photography events and what we do is there's there's different groups, but essentially you ra you gather up. Uh, there's an event that gets planned, like certain hike or whatever, and then you all go and take photos at the place. But what we did was a crazy, a crazy thing where we went to Parc Omega, okay, and we went last year, last winter at the the most the coldest day of the year, and it was in a we rented a bus, a school bus, okay, and then we went like 15 photographers in the photographers in there. And we went through the Parc Omega, yeah. and it was freaking cold because you have to pull down the windows <laughs> yeah, yeah. to take photos. Yeah. So it was like freezing. Freezing. Like we, I had four layers on. I had two toques on. I had like uh, two scarves. <laughs> double toqued up. Yeah, right? yeah, double toqued up. <laughs> yeah. I was full. Like I had a video on my story at one point, and like people were like this taking photos. And it's it's crazy. Why? Like, but Why did you guys decide it, to do that? It, it just happened. Is to it the be, breath? Is that what you want to get? Is that what you want to capture? Actually, yeah, there are some photographers in there that are like legit award-winning photographers, and that's what they told me. Some of them said it was a breath, but also it just we planned it in advance. Like I, I think it was two weeks in advance. Okay. So they didn't know it was going to be that cold. Oh, okay. But but it turned out well because apparently, yeah, they said they said it it, it makes the photo better. For me, I'm not a real photo like I'm not a like award winning photographer, so I don't know. What's the difference? What's the difference? Like, are they like they get awards? Border <laughs> borderline obsessive. Well, I'm not gonna say the word, but you know what I mean. Like, very like you know. That's their mission. Yeah. Their mission is to be as best as possible at photography. Mm. My mission isn't to be become that. My mission is to build a business and to help the community. But they are the, you know, the forerunners in front. How do leading. they feel about that? What? 
about you taking the entrepreneur side instead of uh, being an, a, a true artist or a, you know what I mean? Like how, how do they, like, is, is there like backlash and stuff or are they, is there like hatred or uh, frowned upon maybe? Maybe. Yeah. That's a good question. Uh, no, they're really nice. Uh, yeah. I think, I think they, they probably, maybe they don't see my vision. But I think when they'll understand, and maybe because I've added a lot of new features to the site today, mm -hmm. if they see that, they'll understand where I'm going. Before, I think the first time I launched the, the new site, it wasn't it wasn't perfected. So I I spoke to some photographers and I told them like, hey, what do you think? And they would say, yeah, it's okay. But now with the new updates and the new upgrades. I'm sure that they'll understand where it's going and they'll be like, oh, okay, you're trying to build a database. You're trying to help travelers and tourists <laughs> like navigate their way through cities when they're traveling to make their time easier because they're going to, when you're, you're planning a trip, you're not going to one website and saying, okay, here's my whole trip. No, you're going to multiple. Yeah. You're going, oh, let's yeah. say there's a, there's one website that I used to go to when I was hiking mm -hmm. is, uh, it's, it's all the tr hiking trails everywhere. Like it would tell you where to hike, but then I'd have to go to another one. Like, okay, where's the museums? Okay. Where's the beach? Okay. Where's the hotel? Where's the flight? But now I'm trying to plan all the activities on one website. So Damn. you'll have, filtering system where it's going to show you okay what do you want museums check it shows you all the museums in north Damn, america that's insane all, all the beaches that were approved that were visited by one of our travelers together and then you know one uh, all the hiking trails that were done photos photo gallery description uh link to the blog if there's a blogger that went and and wrote a blog link to the blog on the same site <laughs> so it's like a one hub yeah. And the more the community grows, it's just better for everything. It's better for the site. It grows itself pretty much. Yeah. If in they a sense. Would, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a thing like it's a tool yeah. and you can choose to use it or, or not. If you're building a house, you don't have to use a hammer. But if the hammer is there... Why not? You should probably use it. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. true. Fuck it. See, <laughs> hey, man, that's it's like it, it's going to be inevitable one day because it will mm -hmm. grow. It will grow like exponentially. And for and for now, man, there is a lot of destination. I, I did. Uh, I looked at it and there was a lot of. But what are the new features that you added on? Uh, yeah. So, so the filter of, system. Yeah. The filtering system okay. today. There's three features uh, today. Uh, one, one is. Yeah. The second one is uh, photo gallery. It expands more. So you get the full page, the photo at full size um and then the third is when you get close enough it shows you a circle with the photo inside on the map before you even click on it so you just scroll on like the map mm -hmm. and it shows you all the name of the activity and the photo even before you click on it so wow. it's like even easier like that it's, it's it, it, building on laziness like at the point where it's like okay like this this does it all the work for you. <laughs> yeah. And um, are you reaching out to writers like across the globe or you're, you're sticking to your, your Canadian crew or what do you, what's your plans with this? Yeah, I have a Canadian crew, but some of them move to other countries. Okay. So it helps me. Uh, like my, uh, my best friend growing up moved to South Korea <laughs> and uh, to be an English teacher, but he's also a classic. traveler. <laughs> yeah, classic. <laughs> but he's also cool. a traveler. He travels yeah. Asia all the time. Wow. So like he's doing the Asia... Uh, you know, sector. And then, you know, if, if I had an, uh, another traveler who's always in Europe, so he's like doing European things and, and then, yeah, I have someone in uh, South, South America that she, she uh, was raised there. She came to Canada and then she came, she wow. went back. So Where? my crew is uh, from Col Colombia. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, like they, they all have, uh, you know, different <laughs> backgrounds, but they all travel and we all met through uh, like travel or from from uh, Ottawa, and uh, yeah, they, it's it's my base crew. But we're always looking for more people. If more people want to join, yeah. hey man, yeah. I got a lot of I got a lot of fuckers from France that are listening to my stuff. Not now because I'm speaking in English, but all my French content. Yeah. And the Français, man, they love me, man. I don't know why. I have no idea why. <laughs> but um, like, w w where's your? I know you said Banff was you know your, your top of your list, but where have you traveled? Yeah, Banth and Jasper, I want to say that clear because uh, a lot of people uh, say that uh, ignore Jasper, but it's right next to right in the mountains, Banff. Yeah. And it's even better, I would say. It's as good or even better. But yeah, because I don't want to throw shade at Jasper because I, I love that place. <laughs> um, 
I've I've done uh, I've done Canada completely mm. um, from coast to coast, which was uh, rough because I drove most uh, I drove. <laughs> Holy so shit. yeah, from from Vancouver to St. John's. No, I drove from uh, from Vancouver to Ottawa, okay. and then from Ottawa to St. Anthony's. Holy which shit, which is uh, Newfoundland. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Holy shit, man! Yeah. How long did that take you? I did it in two two trips. Okay. So. Uh, to, the, uh, to Vancouver, I was only there two two weeks. I did it quick. It was like I was there with a mission. I was there with like the the like I'm going here, 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 taking photos. Like it wasn't really uh, like a, a vacation, and mm -hmm. that's the big difference between vacations and this kind of line of work. A lot of people see that in, uh, influences are there having fun. They're not there having fun. They're there to work. So it's like you you go to a location, you take the photos, you. You know, you, you get the information you need to go. and then, Edit. Yeah, yeah. And fucking work on your laptop. Yeah. A lot of people who've come to me on, on trips yeah. have, like, said, a thought, like, it was going to be, like, a, a super fun, like, we're just going to lounge on the beach chill, yeah. for, like, three days. Hell That's not no. what it is. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately. Well, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, I haven't, uh, I didn't see it like that before, for sure, because it is your job now, right? So, like, that's, you, you have to grind, you have to put in the work, and you don't really get to, like, indulge in, like, the culture, like, you know? Well, you do, but... Yeah, I will once I get more uh, international, like, more uh, across the uh, ocean, because uh, the U.S. and Canada is very similar in terms of culture. So, yeah. like, when I travel through U.S. and Canada, wherever I am, I I feel like I'm... I'm good. Like I understand the culture, uh, but yeah, once I get to like Europe, if if I decide to go, which is my next plan, is to start going in Europe and doing all the things. Then yeah, I would have to indulge more into the culture. Oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah. But you're kind of forced in there too, right? Mm -hmm. So the culture is uh, yeah, Europe is beautiful, man. Spain, I, I've I've been to Spain and Iceland. Iceland's not really well. It, it is considered Europe, but it's in the middle of the fucking ocean, so it's yeah. not really. It's more Newfoundland than Europe. But yeah, um, man, Europe is uh, it's beautiful, and there's so much. It's not only the people, but it's the architecture, it's the history, it's everything. You can take pictures of pretty much like you. You can be there for a long time. Yeah. You know? Never come back. Never come back. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever thought of uh, leaving? Uh, I've I've thought about uh, moving to different cities in Canada, but not yeah. not moving to another country. Yeah, Canada's beautiful, man. Yeah, it really is. It, you don't appreciate. It's like it's like you can't learn how to drive in a parked car. So you can't you can't really talk about Canada if you haven't seen all of it. So I feel like a lot of people say like Canada is not a fun place to travel. And that was one of my my first initial thought. I was like, okay, is Canada going to be as good as some people say it is? It is. It's even better oh, no. than Absolutely. I, I was totally the most agree. amazing nature. Yeah. yeah, but it's fucking expensive. Yeah. That's it. You know what I mean? If mm -hmm. it was cheap, holy fuck, everybody would be here, man, fucking tra traveling here. It's gorgeous from coast to coast and we're so it's so large, man. It's insane. We have more people from other countries tr uh, yeah. traveling and visiting. Than, really? Yeah. Really? But yeah, it's it, it, yeah, it's expensive. I, <laughs> I give you, yeah. 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 How much do you think? Like, how much did it cost in gas? Like, when did you do that trip? Was that a long time ago or? Uh, tw uh, t uh no, last uh, two years ago, twenty twenty one. Okay. So how much gas, uh, give or take? Oh, I can't even. I can't even. I don't even remember. I, I think I blocked it out of my mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess it was so. such a it was such it. a painful traumatic experience. experience <laughs> yeah, the yeah, gas bill. Yeah. <laughs> what, what was the coolest thing? I know you, you like you were you did short stints in the big cities, but what was the coolest thing like you've done across Canada? Yeah, I really liked. Uh, uh, I thought I thought the Rockies were cool, and I also I saw like a real black bear yeah. like in the forest while yeah. hiking, so that was really cool. Although the I feel like the people there didn't really didn't really like pay attention because there's other people there and they weren't really I was like hey there's a there's a black bear there like let's move but I think black bears are not seen as 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 dangerous no. as grizzly bears well, no of course not so when I went to Vancouver uh, Vancouver around there mm -hmm. we did a lot of hiking there's signs every maybe mile about grizzly bears and it's like and I was hiking alone at one point I said. Ah, all right. Another sign. Uh, uh, watch out for grizzly bears. We're not uh, 
<laughs> we're not responsible. I'm Holy like, shit! Oh man. my god! <laughs> what would you like? I, I'd be so fucking scared. You have you, you I, have no control, man. Yeah, I waited till like there's a group of people that came after me, and mm -hmm. I was like, let's just like, all hike together. <laughs> okay, because like, like, oh, let's let them go first. No, <laughs> no, because yeah, because you got to be smart at that point. There's a difference between being brave and being smart. Yeah. At that point, like I could have said, yeah, I just powered through it. But really, uh, when it comes to that point, grizzly bear is very dangerous. Animal. Oh, oh, very yeah. dangerous. Yeah, it's well, it's territorial, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's like like because up north we have uh, polar bears sometimes too, and it, that's the difference, right? The like, yeah. grizzlies are very territorial. Like they will fuck you up if you're in like a kilometer radius of whatever they th they consider their their home. Yeah. And uh, but polar bears, uh, they they're fucking starving, so they're yeah. gonna eat you, dude. Like there's no yeah. well. You know, the grizzly will fuck you up, maybe not eat you, but the the, the polar bear will eat you alive, man, yeah. like a fucking chicken wing, man. And uh, black bears, not that scary, you know? Not, yeah. Scary, but not that scary, yeah. 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 Not as in the scale of of uh bears. Of bears, yeah. Probably the lowest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's your bear ranking, man? Well, polar bears are dangerous, too, yeah. I hear. I hear they hunt for fun. Uh, yeah. So I wouldn't want to mess with a polar bear. Yeah. yeah, and they get fucking huge, man. <laughs> yeah. So scary. Yeah. Like um, in, in my uh, parents' hometown, uh, like when there's a polar bear, there's like a f full announcement. Like everybody, get the fuck, get your dogs inside. <laughs> yeah. Like you know what I mean? That's an easy snack for a grizzly bear. Like, it's a fucking <laughs> granola bar for them. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's crazy, man. And well, like, do you have plans of? Um, uh, you said you you wanted to go to Europe. Like, do you have like a itinerary scheduled or yeah. nothing? Nothing yet? You're yeah, just focused no, on your business? No, there is. There's always a. a t uh, there is, always is one. Like I'm a very organized person, as as you probably noticed. Uh, like I like to plan stuff. Like when I travel, like I ha always have a list and people, you know, people might complain, but I always have a list. So, but I don't have one for Europe. Like I, uh, I'm not there yet, but I have like ideas of countries I want to go. I want to go to Italy, France, uh, England, start there on the East coast and then like see see how, how things yeah. go. Yeah. I have something with yeah. like I, the Nordique, man, the Nordique, yeah. uh, like this, the, the, um, Jesus, the Scandinavian countries are gorgeous. Mm -hmm. absolutely beautiful man like iceland was like another planet it was so cool i hear good th like i hear a lot of good things yeah and i want to go now because you can see the country yeah. in 12 hours technically that's if you go non-stop like you like mm -hmm. you know what i mean if you go all around that you could you can do the whole country in 12 hours it's one um highway mm -hmm. and you can camp wherever you want there yeah. is no laws it's not, it's not like here you don't have to pay or whatever like you can camp beside a volcano if you want to at everyone's discretion but if you want to yeah you can you know yeah. So and that's it. Volcanoes. And apparently, what was it? I think I saw it in the news. Was it this morning or yesterday? They had like over 150 like like tiny earthquakes in the past like 24 hours. Something's gonna erupt, Shit, man. man. Yeah, maybe. At least it gets you. It keeps you warm at night. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> man, they um, they even cook. They even use the um, the earth to cook. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, like bread and stuff. Yeah, that is really cool. That's man. pretty cool. You get like a frying pan on like a yeah. fisher on a fisher. Yeah. Oh man, that's, that's but sad. it does smell like rotten eggs though. That is something. The Every lava? time the water. Oh, the water. But it, you you can kind of smell it in the air all the time. Oh, the steam. Yeah, it smells okay. like yeah, sulfur. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> as soon as you turn the tap the tap on for the for water, mm -hmm. it's the purest water. Like it's glacier water, man. It's not like fucking you know unfiltered bullshit like we we drink. It's glacier water. What they what they drink, you know. Okay. But it does smell like sulfur. So you yeah. gotta let it run a little bit, and then, then you can pour yourself a glass. You know. Is there anything cleaner than glacier water? No, I don't think so. No, yeah. I don't think so, man. Yeah. We and and that's the thing that, that I find cool over there in Iceland is that they really live off the land, and everything is just so natural. Like mm -hmm. you, like we went into like a grocery store, and everything is everything is locally grown. Mm -hmm. They have their own greenhouses and stuff. Like they, they grow yeah. their own fruit and vegetables. It's it's sustainable. It's it's amazing, man. But they don't let a lot of people in. Like. Yeah, it's good to like I've seen some some really good photographers go there and of amazing shots like people uh, even people I've talked to like they go and they always rave about how great it is. Yeah, like you said, it's just like from another planet. Yeah. It's it's 
you know, it's it's definitely on, it should be on the bucket list. Yeah, and it, it, it depends like what time of year and stuff. Like I was talking to Roland, and Roland went like um, during um, Northern Lights season. Oh shit, dude. Come yeah. on, like what? Like the shots are just crazy, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But the thing I think why um, it's so attractive for t for uh, photographers is that it's it's so small, and you can get a lot of shooting in in a short period of time, so you can just explore everything, right? It's crazy, man. Yeah. It's like a photographer's playground. Like I I I love photography. That's I, I that's why I I'm interested in speaking with photographers because I had a, a short stint in photography. I tried a lot of shit in my life, man. But yeah. I was always creative, right? So I always had like to I had to find this avenue to like express myself. Yeah. And um, photography was I I'm more of an art art like I'm I'm less entrepreneur you yeah, know what i mean yeah. i do it because now i have like no choice yeah. but i'm more of an artist you know what i mean like i can go get lost in the woods man and just like look at every little detail and just you know yeah you know? yeah it's it's being an artist is great it's just being an artist doesn't pay well so That's you have to get a little you bit have of to figure out a way to to get money for being an artist and that's 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 the mission that's everything yeah that's everything it's so hard dude like yeah. it's crazy and yeah. whatever avenue you choose like it's not going to be easy man yeah. it's but well you know back in the nft days maybe but nowadays <laughs> it's uh it's not really his fault how do you th what do you think about that what a fucking scam that was dude <laughs> jesus uh, christ <laughs> yeah a lot of people made money but now it's worth like nothing so yeah i would move on from that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. find something else yeah yeah what do you think about ottawa you like ottawa oh yeah it's 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 great but i i've lived everywhere in ottawa i've lived downtown i lived on the east west east the west yeah it's it's great i would say living downtown because everyone asked me about living downtown how is it it's great for a short period of time but it's quick it's like everyone everyone's there to work it's it's fast paced yeah, yeah. it's very fast paced uh -huh. and it's not a place to to like stay for a long period of time, but I'm really happy that I did it. The experience of living downtown Ottawa is really great. Unfortunately, I was living downtown Ottawa during the convoy. <laughs> How was that experience? <laughs> that was fun. Yeah. Earplugs uh, helped out. <laughs> did they even work, man? No. <laughs> 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 holy shit poor yeah. you man fuck like you know like i'm i'm always for uh you know peace uh, protests and stuff like that but you know when you're living in it <laughs> it kind of <laughs> sucks dude yeah so i I, <laughs> I was like okay i'll plan a trip now so after <laughs> yeah, like smart. two weeks in i i was like okay i can't do it anymore so i planned a trip and i left and then when i came back you know it was pretty much done but essentially uh yeah i uh, I would say living downtown Ottawa now uh, is still fun, but uh, I would say, you know, on the outskirts, like in the east end is very fun, like near Orleans or Cumberland, or uh, in the west end, like Westboro is great also, living there in Canada, of course. But hmm. yeah, like, I, I just like Ottawa as a place to live, and also because there's so much rich history in Ottawa, like, I, I was starting out doing photography in Ottawa. So I got all the little places, all the niches, all the places you could go. I saw them all. And wow. it's, it's a, it's a really nice. Is place. there a lot of things to see in Ottawa? Yeah. A lot of people say website. like, Oh yeah. Okay. It's oversaturated though. Like it's so small and like, it's boring and stuff, but honestly, man, it's, it's not. Well, yeah. Depends. Like, so if you compare Put the it, senators downtown and we'll be good. If you, yeah. If you compare it to other cities, it might, yeah. It, but it's still in the top 10 it's it For would sure. still be in my ten, top 10 favorite cities in canada mm -hmm. it would probably be around yeah i won't say the number but <laughs> it's 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 probably in the top 10 yeah, yeah. but yeah isn't there only put, like 10 like, major cities <laughs> no no i mean it's like, number 10 bro like <laughs> no no but it's probably like it, it's a great it's a great city to what's live your top in. city like if you were to if choose one to city live, yeah uh toronto yeah. or um toronto or uh calgary yeah calgary is awesome man. Really but it's that. cold though calgary Very. that's the only problem yeah yeah if not it would be a really nice place because yeah. you're close to everything you're close to the the, na the nature you're close to the rockies you're close to the city and there's a lot of employment opportunities i don't there know is. it's 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 a nice place mm. 
Alberta's yeah. gorgeous, yeah, for sure. I always like to, like, I always had it in my head, like, oh, fuck, I got to go back to the East Coast, man. I miss the water, you know. It's just the the smell. Yeah. The smell. As soon as I smell the salt water, it's just, like, I feel, I don't know, all of my stress and anxiety just goes away. Like, I don't know if I can do Toronto. Like, I thought about Toronto. Toronto's, it's a nice city, man. It's a nice city, but it's it's like a mini New York. You know what I mean? Like, you yeah. don't do much for me. You, you know? do it when you're young. But, yeah, yeah essentially, you... You have what's cool about it is the lake it's it's next to there's so many beaches because the lake is so big that it looks like the ocean true so the beaches are like legit real feels like real beaches mm -hmm. it's not like you go like i don't know uh halifax or whatever and you have the best beaches in canada but like the uh like the crescent uh crescent beach uh which is my favorite beach anyways in canada but you have really nice beaches, but you also have the city. So my my uh, my way of finding the best city is like, what does it have? Like, does it have employment opportunities? The nature, like the hiking, like the 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 beaches, like that's how I look at it. Hmm. Yeah. Well, and what are you, like you said? Uh, like, there's a lot of uh, different beaches and stuff, but do you? Well, yeah. I was gonna say like moving to Halifax must be must be nice too, but fuck, it gets cold, man. Beside the water, like, it can get really cold. But I guess it's a different type of cold, too, you know? Because Alberta is very... How can I say that? It's just... There's nothing, like, to bounce off of. Like, it's just, like, prairie, man. Like, it's cold as fuck. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest going in the, like, the winter. outskirts. Yeah. yeah, during winter. So, Halifax, I've never been during winter, so I can't I can't talk about how, it, how cold it is. Mm. You probably know more than me, but... Mm essentially uh in the summer freaking amazing mm. have you ever like thought of going to, to asia you said your friend is in asia uh, as a, t a teacher was south korea by the way must be so cool must be what a culture shock that yeah. must be. yeah i was i know i told him i said you need to write a blog about culture shock and he did he wrote uh, one on the website about uh seoul so which is uh the capital city yeah. of south korea mm -hmm. which is where he lives and I was like, dude, you are going there without knowing the language, without knowing much about it. He went when he was young, so early 20s. So he went and uh, he was like, yeah, it's it's really crazy. He told me so many things like the food, you know, the beer is really cheap, like the the, the, the culture, like how how uh, they live in, in small smaller spaces because it, it's essentially – a very small country so it's like and you're near you know you're surrounded by water dictatorship yes. oh, yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but essentially in canada we're like all like uh you know yeah. we have the most land we well we're the second largest country yeah. we have so much land we have so much space everyone lives in big houses but like over there it's like apartments like little apartments and he was showing me like the apartments and it was like it was like you, you know your your bed folds into the wall and like a Murphy bed yeah. <laughs> like yeah. there's no there's no space for a living room like you know it's, it's, oh you got to fold your bed in the wall to like eat supper yeah that's crazy man <laughs> wow but, but uh, you know that at the time that's the food's yeah, amazing yeah. too I I love the Korean culture their food and everything like I like their drinking culture yeah I love like soju man yeah oh my god I can drink soju all day man yeah. oh. and uh, yeah the uh, seafood over there is all fresh right yeah. uh, one of the biggest export is is fish so it's like yeah it's <laughs> do you know yeah. anybody that's been to India India? Yeah, I'm kind of fascinated by India. Like, I want to, I want to go. No, I can't. I can't say that. I know. Hmm. No. Hmm. Yeah, but what? What are you fascinated about? It's one the immense culture shock. Like, I've never got it. Like, uh, gotten a culture shock. Like, a not. Well, I've had a little bit, but like, not. I want like a a full like reset. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I want to get like dropped into somewhere where I have no clue. You know, like South Korea would be really cool. Yeah. But you know. I don't know. I have a fascination with uh, with it, and I think uh, not only that too. South Africa, South Africa would be really cool to go on a, for, uh, on, a yeah. on a safari. Actually, my parents did that. Really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. They said it was it was great. Uh, they took some photos, and yeah, that's one of my dreams as well. At one point, to do that, like you know, I'm really fascinated by uh, wildlife photography, mm -hmm. which is I know I'm not a, you know one of those photographers, but I really got into uh, you know, wildlife, animal photography, like the fur, like taking photos of fur 
for hmm. me. I don't know. I, I the like, texture? Like, yeah, the texture is really cool. Hmm. Like when you get like close-up shot of like a lion or something and you see the mane with the fur. I don't know. That is really cool. That, that would be yeah, I know. I, a, I, a I, killer shot. I, oh, I, for sure. I got a shot of a wolf and that was amazing and I, I, I hanged it. Well, in my, uh, in my, it was my, one of my first photos of an animal that I got right. <laughs> so I was like, and the fur was great. But imagine a lion, how that would, how yeah. amazing. How'd you get a be. wolf? Where the fuck did you get a wolf? Oh, it was just uh, at Parc Omega. Okay, yeah. they are gorgeous though. Yeah, were they white at the time? It was uh, gray, 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 white wolf. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. so cool, man. The, I was talking uh, talking about this with Roland, and like it's just. There's something fascinating about animals, man. Yeah. Like, you can't control them, right? They're just, like, out there living, and it's just that you, when you capture the moment, like, what is your what is your top, like, moment or top picture that you've captured that comes to mind? Uh, actually, I do know. Uh, I thought that'd be, that would be a hard question, but now that I'm thinking, it was my favorite. It's probably my favorite photo, I will say, is uh, Pato Lake in uh, Banff. And um, it's essentially hiking up the mountain. I got a full view of the Pato Lake from a mountain view. So it's all, it's like, you see all the mountains from far away and you see the lake. Pato Lake is uh, turquoise blue water, mm -hmm. you know, because of the, the minerals fall down from the, uh, from the erosion. So the, it falls down into the water and turns the water like turquoise. So the, the, it gets suspended in light. I don't know why, but I was trying to research the scientific reason. But essentially, it, it's a really nice photo, I think. It was a good photo, so it's hanging over uh, my couch. Wow, so that's cool. That, that was my favorite. To have moment. it in your house, that's awesome. Yeah, that, that's my favorite photo, I think. And it was, it was by sheer luck because... It was one like at the beginning too. It was <laughs> the, my best photo was like when I was an amateur. Yeah. Do you think you do you think maybe it was is because you weren't like thinking about it maybe. that much? Yeah, I think so too. I think I was just in the zone. Mm. You know, you're like you like turn around and you're looking at it and like oh my god, and you take a photo and you're like you don't even think about it, but then you look at it later and you're like holy shit, that's like the best photo I've ever taken. <laughs> is photography oversaturated or do you think you can still be successful in the in the business? In the industry as like a full career yeah you have to leverage social media right you have to leverage it and you have to be very good at it you have to be award-winning almost to be to be well maybe not award-winning but you need to be known at, like you have your portfolio has to be immaculate for you to to be like a, a career in it like I, I looked at some people's portfolios and I'm like yeah, you deserve you deserve to be a really well paid photographer. And is that just yeah. with time, or it's with talent as well? Like it's kind of like a, a like a, a double edged sword kind of. You have to have the talent, or hard work will win against talent any day. Absolutely, I, I say there's no such thing. You have to be, yeah, you have to be a hard worker, a at anything, anything you do, you put in the work. Yep. I have never met someone who puts in a lot like all their hard work all their time you know presents themselves you know as as being you know um what's that word like presents themselves as as being um uh how can you say that what do you mean like perseverant or yeah like, perseverant yeah. but like uh being authentic mm -hmm. that's the word i'm looking for so like being authentic in what you do like putting a, a lot of hard work I've never met someone who's been failing at that putting a hundred percent into something and, and really, really failing at it. Like you there's there's people that will always blame, you know, other things or other people for that. But the people who don't blame anything and really go a hundred percent in and put all their all their eggs in one basket and go for it, usually I've never met someone who's done all that and put in the real hard work. Like when everyone else is like doing like you know watching tv or like hanging out with friends they're like working all the time and they're putting the grind in day after day like every day i've never met someone who's failed at something doing all that that's true yeah. and it's consistency too right yeah oh man discipline. it's crazy it is discipline i, I talk about so it hard. all the yeah i talk about it all the time about discipline mm -hmm. on my instagram yeah. about like discipline will get you very very far and discipline is essentially doing the things you want to do regardless regardless of how you feel 
Mm. So like you feel bad today, you don't like, you don't want to do it, you do it anyway. Like look at people who go to the gym every day and like they're like, you know, they start out really small and they get really big. They don't like going to the gym every day. They go because that they, their have goal, to. they have to. Their goal is to get to a certain size. They go every day. They go at 5 a.m., you know, every every morning. They go. To, I've been to the gym and I've seen those people. Yeah, they, you know, they don't blame other people. They, they just go and they do it. Yeah. 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 No, there, there's no one else to blame yeah. but yourself. Yeah. You have nobody else. Yeah. And discipline nowadays is so rare. The bar is so low yeah. to be successful. Yeah. It's crazy, but you got to fucking want it, man. You got to want it. Yeah. And uh, sometimes it's, it, hey, some days I want it more than others. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you, you, you got to keep that spark. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to take photos all the time. I don't want to, you know, sometimes I don't want to go coding on my website, but yeah. I have to because we, we have yeah. deadlines to meet and stuff. Yeah. But you have to, Yeah. you have to rather, it is, it could sound a little harsh, but you, you, you have to die before you give up, man. If you really want to, no, but seriously, <laughs> yeah, if no, you want yeah. like yeah. To, to, succeed, to, to succeed in your dream or, yeah. or, or your certain goal, you have to be willing to give it literally everything, man. Yeah. And even if you think, okay, this has to be enough, it's not, you know, until you reach that day. But you'll always, as humans, we, we're always out there to, to, to strive for more, right? To mm -hmm. grow, to evolve. And we're just going to, as soon as you hit that plateau as an entrepreneur, you're just going to look for something else. This is, this is why you see these billionaires. Like everybody's like, Oh, what? don't they have enough money? Yeah. But it's not the point. Yeah. Because you know, the mission is the grind. Yeah. Yeah. And so you can even say the same for like pol uh, politics or whatnot. Yeah. Like they want power. Power comes with the grind and it's just another, yeah. another step. Right. We're just, it's just, you know, it's, it's up to you. Do you want to ride the wave or do you want to be a part of the wave? You know what I mean? It's yeah. Up to you, There's man. not a lot of people in the way, <laughs> but no. yeah, yeah, you get to, you get there. But uh, it's more even if you succeed a goal and you you get to the top of the mountain and you say, okay, I'm done. Then what else? You, what you else? find out that the whole happiness and well, the whole success and yeah, the whole, the whole idea of of the happiness that you got from it was the actual climb was the fun part, the grind, the daily yeah. grind. Yeah, even though some days. It sucks, you know, some days, but you do it anyway. But yeah, at the end, or you look at it and you go, it was the climb was really fun. Yeah, yeah. Like, I would rather die than live with regret, man. Yeah. You know, like, oh, I gave up. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. We only have one life, man, and it is so precious. Like, just have fun, man. I you like know? telling people that I'm doing something because it gives me, uh, it gives me like shame if I tell them I give up. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, let's say I go to someone and I say I'm building a company. Then you go back to them and you say, you know what? I gave up. Yep. That kind of puts a bar for me. Like, I can't go to someone and say that. I would rather die yeah. than, than go to someone and say, you know what? I, I gave up. So it helps. it helps with accountability to tell a few people, especially people you like look up to. Um, that you're doing something because if you're keeping it to yourself at one point you know there's no repercussions like to, to failure there's no like okay like no nobody knew i was doing it so nobody know if I'll, I'll fail but yeah i think discipline is very very important in it and it's something you're either born with i don't know I, maybe i just always had it or you develop it on the way you do you you learn you learn it but since a young age um, I had another company when I was 19 called uh, Toss Graphics, which was a web design company. And from there, I remember I was grinding, grinding, grinding. People were going at the clubs. People were going out to party. I was grinding. And uh, I was like, <laughs> I was hiring people and I was like 19. I was like, uh, everyone else was like at the club. So I, I understand discipline to that way. But uh, I, one, I guess it helps you out later in life too when you're adulthood because mm -hmm. life is tough, man. And oh, you man. need discipline. Yeah. Like, it is too because you like, would never know yeah. what can happen. Like you have to be able to adapt to everything yeah. that nowadays, especially nowadays. Jesus Christ. It's like taking the poison before uh, – sorry, taking the, the cure before you take the poison. Mm. If you're always out being the best version of yourself, whatever comes your way is going to be – it's not going to affect you as mm. much because you're already taking the antidote. You're borrowing yeah. – tomorrow's pleasure 
for tonight's fun or whatever like I, it was some quote like that like mm-hmm. you're borrowing you're borrowing your happiness from tomorrow just for a couple of, what, an hour or two yeah. you know what i mean like yeah. just don't like i used to party like crazy i i still like like have drinks and stuff like that but i mm-hmm. do not i'm not i'm far from an alcoholic like i do not drink every day mm-hmm. i drink like once every two weeks or or whatnot mm-hmm. and um alcohol is will destroy your motivation dude <laughs> You know, and other things can destroy your motivation too. But hey, it all depends on the person, right? But you have, it doesn't matter. You can blame it on anything. You can blame it. There's, there's so oh. many factors you can blame it on. Oh, yeah. But at the end of the day, hey, look, man, you're, you're waking up no matter what. So it's, you got to fucking do it, you know? Yeah. Like you can blame it on fear sometimes. Like, oh, I'm scared of doing it. But at the end of the day, you got You got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, I was scared of doing a lot of things in my life. I went through a lot of things, but you know, f- fear. You know, you got to go through it anyway. Like the fear is not as bad when you, after you get through it. So, mm. you 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 learn through actually, you learn through uh, the most in your life when you're in your uh, the most difficult times. When you're home, everything is fine in your life. All your you know, everyone in your life is happy and you're doing, you're feeling on top of the world. You're not learning anything. Like, you're, you're not getting better. You're just chilling. You're just staying put. But when really hard things in your life happen, that's when you're learning and developing and becoming a ber- better version of yourself the most. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I like bad moments in my life <laughs> because in that way, like a lot of people say, oh, I'm scared of this. I like obstacles in my life because they make me a better person damn yeah i like that because you know everything can be scary every you know and fear is so overwhelming like even in sales let's say doing 100 to 200 cold calls can be frightening to people yeah but you have to do it Mm -hmm. you know they say that the the biggest fear in people is uh, public speaking yeah number one fear more than uh falling from Mm -hmm. the sky so cold calls is kind of like public speaking mm-hmm. a little bit. <laughs> For me, it wasn't that. I yeah. have no trouble. I just I never had mm-hmm. a, a problem um, not shutting my mouth. You know what I mean? <laughs> Always loud voice, and I was able to um, you know articulate and speak what I what I wanted to uh, to get out. Like you know to, to what I wanted to say. I n- I never had a filter, and um, but the only thing that scared me though was um, public opinion. Okay. That was terrifying, you yeah. know. Maybe, maybe because I was kid, uh, I was a kid getting bullied a lot, and public opinion or everybody's opinion of me was uh, my everything. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that w- took a long time for me to uh, grow out of, for sure. Um, but that was a hard step. And even nowadays, even nowadays, like uh, going out to parties and stuff, like I get so like, ugh, it drives me insane. Like if I don't know anybody, yeah, buddy, like I am gonna stay home. <laughs> like, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. You mean like uh, like if like people are talking bad behind your back or like your no. your reputation? Like, maybe a like, little bit of both. Yeah. Or maybe it's just um, overthinking the situation too, and nobody's fucking talking behind your back. Because oh, okay, at the okay. end of the day, nobody cares, oh, right? Okay. Okay. But th- that was my fear. Yeah. I was like, okay, like if they're insulting me in front of my face, like they must. That was like, as a child, right? Yeah. So it just never left. Yeah. I guess. So I was the same way. Like, okay, I'll talk, but I'll sh- I'm gonna hide after. Like, I don't give a <laughs> shit, you know. Yeah. Um, but what, what scares me before was like networking or like yeah. meeting new people and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, buddy. Like if we have a conversation, no problem. Like no problem. Like if you, if someone sparks the conversation, yeah. but like if I'm not uh, going out there and, and saying like, Oh, how was your day, buddy? Like on the street, you know what I mean? It, which is weird. Cause that's, this is exactly what we're doing. This is the first time we met each other. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. it's just, I don't know. I understand. Uh, I think the worst is when you're talking about something that you don't understand, that you don't know, mm. or like if you're if you're uh, going in networking events yeah. and you're talking about your passion, then for me, anyways, it was easy. But when I'm talking to something about that I don't really understand, it's freaking scary. Yeah, like because uh, being like the dumbest person in the room, there's nothing more scared than that. Because you're like you're scared that someone's gonna ask you a question about something <laughs> that's exactly buddy that's it. but like i would I, w- yeah. I would go to these events these suit and tie events you know yeah. like i'm a, like dude like i'm i'm tatted up i i i, I grew up i grew up like yeah you know like playing ball and like i'm i'm a dude man i'm just a normal dude like a, a street talk kind of guy you know what i mean and um i like you know it's just i didn't feel like i've i you know was a part of their crew or whatever but mm-hmm. i started to realize that like entrepreneurs there's no there's no really description for them. 
You yeah, know? entrepreneurs is literally, yeah, it's so vague. Huh? When someone says that, the first reaction I get, like, what does that mean? What does like, that mean? That could mean anything. And, you know, 20 years ago, being an entrepreneur was seen as someone who didn't really know what they were doing. Like, it was like, oh, are you making money? Like, it's not like today where entrepreneurs got a good, they have like a good status now. It's it's seen as a good thing. Uh, but essentially, it's people that uh, they start their own businesses and they've, they've learned to create, monetize uh, their own business or their own passion into something. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. And they come in all shape and sizes, man. I've met some crazy motherfuckers. You know what yeah. I mean? And some, you know, normal, normal people. Okay. You know, like a suit and tie, like oh, hello, sir, like nice. Yeah. And then and one guy is just like all over the place, you know. But that's the thing. Suit and tie. Yeah. Like uh, older, like yeah, a of boomer? course, okay. yeah, yeah. Like yeah. you know, we're like yeah. real estate <laughs> investor. Uh, you know, I'm the five. You know what I mean? Entrepreneurs today, it's like uh, yeah, right like Gen Z or or, or uh, millennials. It's like it's like t-shirt and jeans. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's like a billionaire with t-shirt and jeans. I know. That's what I realized, too. Like, <laughs> yeah. like when you start to meet everybody, yeah. like, okay, like, I'm not the only, like, everybody's yeah. the, you know, like, kind of, re- like, in the beginning, it's just so scary and so overwhelming. Yeah. And how important for you is it to um, step outside the box and be brave or be courageous for, um, you know, starting your own business? <laughs> yeah. I wanted to call my company... Uh, um get outside the travel box okay <laughs> for that's why that's funny but step outside the box is like yeah it's like being creative and thinking so the way i i see life is like i i, I like fixing problems i am like a fixer so like for example for with travel box i saw an opportunity to fix mm-hmm. something that no one had done before which was to make the experience of figuring out your activities uh, on your travel easier like without going to 12 different websites like one spot where you click and it's all approved by the the website like it's all professional explorers that go professional travelers so i saw the opportunity because i was always traveling and i didn't have that experience and it would take me like hours to figure out my activities when it could take less so so i think that thinking outside the box is essentially figure out ways to solve uh, society's problems or at least some problems that yeah. and by that you get rewarded by you know um, either people using it or you cl- um, adding value to the tool yeah and uh, God knows that everybody needs some tools nowadays. You know what I mean? They need some uh, some guidance. And you talked about, like, darkness, too. Yeah. Um, you know, you've been through a lot of uh, mental health, I presume. And, yeah. um, uh, you know, how did you get out of it? Yeah, well, that helped. Uh, photography helped for sure. I-, I wanted a way to escape the inside and go at the outside, but I needed an excuse to do it. So I don't know if that makes sense. But it makes total I needed- sense. I needed like something to push me out because you can't just tell yourself, okay, today I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be like happy, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna pursue all my dreams. If yeah, it's called you're, drugs. You're, yeah, <laughs> you know, but like, like, good thing you didn't go down that route. Yeah, you know, maybe I could not. have. Yeah. Uh, I could have, but uh, I didn't. So um, yeah, that's so yeah. It's it's just to find something to get you out there, and for me, it was it was photography because. I accidentally was was doing okay with it. I was doing good. So I was like, okay, well, this is a way to get me outside because I thought at the time going outside would help. Hmm. So, yeah. And do you have a message? Like, okay, look, nowadays, like a lot of people are, you know, having a rough time, man. Yeah. Do you have like a message for like people? Like, what do you have any tips for anybody who, um, you know, needs to get out of some dark times? Yeah, yeah, for sure. To uh, exercise. Yep. And I'm not talking about like you know, doing a couple uh, push-ups in your living room. I'm saying, like, uh, go go to the gym or go to the home, either home gym or real gym. Exercise a few times a week makes a huge difference. I, I started going in the mornings, too, even better in the mornings. I talk to personal trainers. They say people who go uh, to the gym or exercise in the morning right after, uh, like, getting out of bed uh, makes a huge impact on their mental health. And also in their brain capacity, like they they have they're essentially able to process information faster when they go to the gym in the morning than at night. <laughs> so I would say either, you know, you can go at night, but I'm saying, you know, it's better during the day 
But if, if you find a way to exercise, it doesn't have to be the gym. It could be jogging. It could be going outside, you know, for a walk with your dog. It could be, you know, um, going to, to the beach or going hiking. That's why my website is, is helpful in that way because it, it helps people go outside. And I think that shift that I made in my life helped me a lot. And that's what I would recommend people. Mm. Yeah. So you weren't uh, you weren't like working out and stuff before? Nope. Hmm. Didn't go didn't go outside much. Yeah. Just Makes like a, a gamer, I guess. Yeah. 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 And like uh, crappy at the time I was <laughs> at the my worst time I was doing N sixty four. If you've ever remembered, that's a that's a millennial thing. But I was playing on 64 games. Yeah. And then I'm like, yeah, I hit hot rock bottom. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right, dude, I've been playing Mario Kart for four hours. I'm good, man. Like, I yeah. know you tapped out. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Um, and I find that waking up in the morning and working out before uh, you start your, um, your day mm -hmm. is way better because you're forced to do it. One, you have to work. Yeah. So you're going to work no matter what, even if you go to the gym or not, right? Yeah. But trust me, after work, man, you do not feel like working out. No, okay? you don't. And you, you choke. Don't. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I switched my um, mm -hmm. my uh, work, uh, work schedule. I used to do um, – I used to be a teacher before. Oh. And before going to school, I used to, um, I used to do my cardio every morning. Okay. And now – I work from home. Yeah. You would think, oh, wait, working from home, dude, you have so much time. Yeah, guess what? I don't. Yeah. I sleep in easy. You know, I just log into my computer and like, fuck. So 2024, man, I'm going to go back on a fucking cra crazy grind. I lost over like almost like 100 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's, that's it's great, crazy, man. man. But it takes a lot of dedication. And the same thing for, for starting a business or it's going to suck. Uh, there's days, like you said, like that you don't want to go. No. There's days that you're just like, dude, fuck this shit. But if you quit, it's day yeah. one again. No. You got to restart again. You know. Yeah, yeah. It it'll suck at it, it'll naturally suck at some points, but you do it anyway mm. because pick your mission, suck. Yeah, the mission is worth the. Yeah, it's worth it. At the end, the rewards you get for for grinding far better than the uh, the quick you know things you get uh, from mm. from not uh, pursuing you know your dreams and, and not having discipline in your life. Hmm. Yeah, I talked about it so much during COVID times too. I had, Important. I, I would put co quotes all the time on my stories and, and people would react to like with, uh, you know, very uh, positively uh, to the quotes. They would, it would say it would help them. But essentially at the end of the day, you can read quotes all you want on Instagram or Facebook, but at the end of the day, it's all about you. You got to do it. You got to hmm. go out and start. Stop reading quotes and get out and do it. I mean, you Damn. can still, <laughs> yeah. That, that, that's a good clip right there, buddy. Yeah. And plus it is uh, Men's National Health Month, right? Not National yeah. Mental Health Month. Mm -hmm. um, it is very important, man, because, uh, look, I, love, I lost friends because of suicide, and um, it is oh. a rough, uh, it's a rough avenue, man. It's, uh, and everybody goes through it, but, you know, it's pick your suck. You know, mm -hmm. pick your suck and... If you ever think about it, just think about the repercussions and think about <clears throat> the bigger picture, you know? Yeah, maybe it'll feel good on the, on the spot, but think about the other people, man. Don't be, don't be selfish, you know? Yeah. That's the hard thing about because, it. Because, yeah, because you're also, um, yeah, because people care about you. People care, like, every, everyone cares And they got to live with that everyone. burden, you know? Yeah, it affects everyone around you, so, yeah. Hmm. Well... I think we're going to end on that. <laughs> Very dark, but hey, thank you for All coming right. on, brother. Um, I'm going to every everything is going to be in the description, but where can people uh, reach you? Uh, they can reach me um, either on Instagram. Mm. They, I look at my DMs uh, on my website, the travelbox.com. Oh, yeah. There's a there's a contact page there. Mm -hmm. uh, it goes directly to my email. Awesome. So, guys, thank you for listening. And uh, tune in if you are French. Well, if you're English, you can watch, but you probably won't understand. Uh, you can watch my other podcast called La Zone Payante, which is a uh, gambling podcast and football. We talk football and we give bets every, every week. So, guys, thank you for listening, and I'll see you next week. Ciao.